Thank you, members. The next item on the order paper is a motion on the abuse of service animals. I will ask the clerk to read the motion. That this assembly recognises the invaluable work of service animals used by the PSNI, the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service and the Prison Service, and calls on the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs to introduce to Northern Ireland a law equivalent to Finn's law, making it an offence to harm or abuse an animal in the line of duty. Thank you. I call on Alex Eason to move the motion. Um, thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, moved. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed to allow up to one hour and 30 minutes for this debate. You will have 10 minutes to propose the motion and 10 minutes to wind. All other speakers will have five minutes. Please open the debate on the motion. Thank you. Finn's law came about after Finn was repeatedly stabbed in the chest and head on the 5th of October 2016 during an arrest. The injuries suffered by Finn were so severe that he required four hours of life-saving surgery and 11 weeks of recovery. Finn, for those of you who don't know, is a police Alsatian dog. Under Northern Ireland law, there is no specific offence for causing injury to a service animal whilst carrying out their duties. Attacks on police animals are happening daily, but very few are pursued through the courts due to the lack of appropriate offences. P.D. Finn's offender was charged with criminal damage akin to breaking a window or damaging a police radio. In other words, Finn was deemed worthless. All service animals should be recognised for the vital role they fulfil. Part of that recognition should be the creation of a specific criminal offence for causing injury to them. The fact that the investment of public funds into specific training and licensing of these animals serves to exclude them from the protection of the current Animal Welfare Act is immoral. Many injuries are not followed through to charges. Fewer still go to court and receive any meaningful sentence. Finn's law is not radical. Specific criminal offences for attacking or injuring a police animal have been created and are enforced in 10 states in the United States. Similar offences are also enforced in Austria, Germany, Australia, Holland, Switzerland, England and Wales and Scotland. The flaw in the Animal Welfare Act was identified and considered in Australia when they were creating their animal welfare legislation back in 2002. The Australians ensured that the protections animal welfare legislation offers must apply to their service animals. As a result, they included a specific, a specific section to ensure that the defence of fear should not apply to service animals or be treated as property. The Animal Welfare Bill 2019, Finn's Law, received royal assent on the 8th of April 2019 at Westminster. The bill amended the Animal Welfare Act 2006 so that the statutory defence of fear it contains does not apply to any service animal that has been trained to create intimidation or fear. This includes all service animals. The bill covers England and Wales, but not Northern Ireland, and Scotland has introduced their own laws. Courageous service animals such as police dogs and horses must be offered greater protection under a new law. The proposed motion will remove a section of the current law of self-defence often used by those who harm service animals. This change, coupled with any plans to increase maximum sentences for animal cruelty offences to five years in prison, will make sure that those who harm service animals are punished accordingly. The campaign in Northern Ireland from April 2018 is to have Finn's Law imp implemented here to also protect our service animals, including police dogs, fire dogs, search and rescue dogs, prison dogs and even guide dogs. The current Animal Welfare Act 2011 must be amended to mirror Finn's law known as the Animal Welfare Services Bill 2019. A petition has reached over 44,000 from across Northern Ireland and supporting and backing has come from Canine Search and Rescue, USPCA, IFAW, Assisi Animal Sanctuary, Mid Antrim Animal Sanctuary, Lucy's Trust, Tux Law, Almost Home, Seventh Heaven, the Barn Rescue Centre, Dogs Trust, Battersea Dogs Home, the Kennel Club, plus all the smaller animal rescue centres and organisations across Northern Ireland and the UK. Under the current law, it is unacceptable that as a result of training invested in them, that they are excluded from the protection offered under animal welfare legislation. 
This is an obvious wrong that needs to be put right. Finn's law in Northern Ireland will lead to tougher punishment for those who attack service animals, such as police dogs. It will mean service animals will be protected for their bravery. It is moral that the law does not protect those animals upon which we place so much demand and responsibility on. <clears throat> animals who give their service with such loyalty and dedication to keep us safe, the very least we owe them is the inclusion under the animal welfare legislation. Attacks do happen in Northern Ireland, maybe not as severe as the rest of the UK, but that does not mean we do not protect them should serious attack happen. Police dogs have been hit with bottles and other missiles. Search and rescue dogs also have uh, been put at risk. Northern Ireland's service animals must have the same protection under Finn's law. I respectfully ask the Minister to give this Assembly a commitment to bring Finn's law into operation for Northern Ireland and bring us in line with the rest of the United Kingdom. Finally, I, can I say thank you to Bernadette Kelly from Northern Ireland Finn's Law, who has led the campaign across Northern Ireland for Finn's Law to be introduced. She has often and um, mostly been on her own as she has met and emailed all political parties to lobby for Finn's Law. Finally, Mr Speaker, this motion is about the welfare of our service animals that put themselves at risk for us to have a better society. There's nothing political about this motion. And I really, really hope that all members can see fit to support this motion. This is a chance for this assembly to show what we can do collectively together for the protection of animals and a better place for us all to live. Thank you, Mr. Depp. Thank you. I call Ms. Linda Dillon. Carmel Good. I rise to support the motion here today. Service animals play an invaluable role, as has already been outlined and should be protected in law from being attacked or abused when carrying out their duties. I'm sure everyone will agree that attacks on these or any other animals are abhorrent, and there's no doubt that the loophole in the legislation needs to be addressed. So I will call on the Minister to bring forward legislation through his department to address this and to ensure that these animals are protected in law. Thank you. I call Mr Patsy McGlone. Uh. Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, thank you. Um, can I begin by thanking the member for bringing forward this motion to the Assembly today? It is important that, just as we thank those members of our emergency services for the selfless work that they do every day to keep us all safe, that we also acknowledge the immense contribution that service animals do make. The proposal for the motion has already given us an overview of the background to Finn's law proposal and the circumstances of the severe attack on a police dog in the line of duty. Can I say it struck a chord with me that in the aftermath of the attack, the only law that could be enforced against the assailant was that of criminal damage. It cannot be right that we degrade these animals to the status of personal chattels or objects like a phone or a car. It demeans the contribution they make to our emergency services and it does a disservice to the special place that animals hold in the life of this island. We are known across the world as an island that cares deeply for animals. It should be a goal of this assembly to ensure that we are also known as a society that legislates for the care and protection of animals. So we will be supporting the motion today and we will support efforts by the Justice Minister to legislate for the protection of service animals. It has also been a long campaign of the SDLP to introduce additional protections for all animals, whether they are engaged in emergency service work or not. And I note that the Minister for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs made specific comments on our proposal to introduce an all-island animal cruelty register at question time last week. I wonder would the Justice Minister, and we could put it on the record for her, uh, also give us her assessment of the need for a central register of those who commit crimes against animals across these islands to ensure that they are not able to access rehoming services in the future. I know that there are a number of animal charities who would welcome movement on this particular issue. It is worth noting, too, that the British Government has signalled its own intention to advance beyond the initial Finns law and uh, campaign to increase sentencing for offenders <coughs> excuse me, who commit violence against animals, and in particular service animals. The SDLP, while we're cautious somewhat about tying the hands of the judiciary when it comes to sentencing, but we also recognise there are circumstances where it is appropriate for this Assembly to intervene when sentencing patterns are seen to be unduly late. 
I would welcome the Minister's assessment of current sentencing patterns for those who commit violence against animals and outline if the, the Minister for Justice has any plans to review this area. Can I conclude again by thanking the proposers of the motion and encouraging the members present to support the proposal? Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you. I call Ms. Rosemary Barton. While this motion today, as we have heard, has come about because of Finn's law in England and Wales, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, as a supposed nation of animal lovers, I believe it is only right that a motion based on the protection of defenceless service animals should be brought before the Assembly. Hopefully, this can lead to a much more than a motion at the Assembly, that it will lead to legislation being introduced. In Northern Ireland, we have many animals, particularly dogs and horses, attached to services such as the PSNI Army, Fire and Rescue Service and the Prison Service, who carry out extremely valuable work while being guided and trained by their handlers. This could be as part of a customs control operation at our docks for illicit substances, helping rescue people from a house on fire, being used for crowd control, or assisting with the operation around catching criminals. Also, sadly, in the past, many of you will recollect the use of dogs in the army attending the scenes of suspect devices with their handlers, which turned out to be live devices, and unfortunately, the handlers and their dogs paying the supreme sacrifice. These service dogs were on the front line and without doubt certainly saved numerous lives. <coughs> All of these operations and tasks, from being called out to rescue on a mountainside to tracking suspects, are completed by our service animals on a daily basis and are truly outstanding and greatly complement the regular work of the services. Unfortunately, however, there is a downside to this invaluable work for these particular animals. Very many of them suffer physical abuse in the line of their duty, particularly in the pursuit of suspects. Dogs are all too often kicked, abused and even stabbed deliberately, particularly when they try to apprehend the perpetrator or suspect or the suspect tries to make their bid for freedom. In the case of Finn, one of the most successful police dogs in Ireland, in England, he was left badly injured and bleeding by the suspect lounging at him with a 10-inch blade. In the event, a charge of criminal damage was brought against the suspect, but that treated Finn as if he was a piece of police property. There was no separate penalty that could be imposed on Finn's attacker for the deliberate attack on the animal. Thus the reason we now have this motion, to introduce to Northern Ireland law the equivalent of Finn's law, which would provide for the first time proper protection for the service animals and an appropriate sentence for offenders. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, in conclusion, I call on the Minister of Justice to make specific provision for the welfare of service animals, whose mission is clearly to save the people of this country and community, while assisting and supporting a service officer. We therefore support this motion, this motion that aims to protect our service animals. No longer should people get away with deliberately injuring are killing these brave animals. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next person I have on the list is Mr John Blair. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I rise on behalf of the Alliance Party to uh, support the motion. And in starting, I should also, I think, commend those who have brought the motion to, to the Assembly. Um, I welcome the interest in animal welfare and uh, with animal protection therein. I hope, and as do my colleagues, that similar attention and sympathy is shown when we in this House come to debate other forms of animal cruelty, such as fox hunting and hunting with dogs simply for the kill. On this issue, however, 
uh, and this welcome endeavour to deal with a serious and outstanding matter of potential animal cruelty. It is appropriate to reflect, I think, upon the existing Anim Welfare of Animals Act, Northern Ireland 2011, and subsequent amendments to that Act. The Act deals fairly extensively with the responsibilities of an owner or keeper of an animal, and it also addresses, fair to say to some extent, deliberate harm which may be carried out by a third party. It does not, however, it seems, specifically deal with those animals which are trained and deployed to protect the public. Uh, these animals, Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, we should never take for granted. These public service animals, and I'll, I'll mention dogs in particular, are an essential part of public service and in ensuring our safety. Dogs, as an example, which play a crucial part in drugs and arms searches. Dogs which assist in public order control. Dogs which pursue those suspected of crimes, often wicked crimes, against individuals. I think uh, it is reasonable that we should expect these animals and the role that they play for our benefit to be recognised and protected in law. I therefore have no difficulty in supporting the motion and offering the support of the Alliance Party also. Thank you. Thank you. Before I call the next speaker, who is Mr Harry Harvey, I would remind members that, as is the convention in this House, maiden speeches are made without interruption. I call Mr Harry Harvey. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. It is a privilege to stand here today to make my first contribution to the proceedings of this House and speak in relation to this motion on abuse of service animals. I am humbled to be carrying on the mandate of my predecessor, Simon Hamilton. I would like to pay tribute to Simon and his contribution in this House, and I wish him well in his new role in Belfast Chamber of Commerce. I desire to carry on this representation in the Strangford constituency by being a strong advocate for all in the community, to work tirelessly for them and to help bring about a brighter future for everyone in Northern Ireland. I would also like to pay tribute to my late father, Cecil Harvey, who served in this House in the early 70s, interestingly, along with Minister Putz's father, Charlie. I am very pleased to speak in support of this motion. I pay tribute to the many service animals in Northern Ireland and the public servants that train and handle them professionally and respectfully. These animals are used as sniffer dogs, to detect drugs and fire and rescue, to help defend people and horses for crowd control. Finn's law affords service animals protection, but unfortunately in Northern Ireland we do not have this legislation at present. The introduction of this legislation to protect these animals will ensure those who harm them are punished accordingly. At present, if a service animal is attacked or injured, it is an offence of criminal damage which equates to throwing a stone and breaking a window. This is unacceptable and it is time for this to change. Animal cruelty is real and is happening every day. Physical violence, abuse and death are realities for many animals. As a nation of animal lovers, it seems unfair that we cannot provide the animals the level of protection that they deserve. Dogs have been known to save their handlers' lives, and some have died carrying out their duties. Our service animals provide essential support in our community and serve with loyalty and dedication to keep everyone safe, and it is unacceptable that the law does not protect them. Thank you. Thank you very much, and can I be the first to congratulate the member on making his maiden speech? As I've said, the other members to stand up and speak for the first time in the Assembly can be very intimidating, but you did very well, so congratulations, Harry. The next person I have on my list is Philip McGuigan. Thank you. And can, buy this. can I be the second person to congratulate the member on, on making his maiden speech? Uh, I mean, I stand uh, noting the unanimous support for the motion so far. So. Uh, I mean, the, the proposer has given the rationale and the background to today's motion. He's also outlined the current loophole uh, in the legislation that would see an attack on a service animal currently only classified as criminal damage. I think everybody would uh, agree that that, that is un 
and satisfactory. Animal cruelty against any animal couldn't and shouldn't be tolerated uh, and should be punished accordingly. Service animals play a vital role helping to protect the community here, and I support uh, this motion uh, in trying to update the, the legislation to ensure that we offer them the protection they deserve and support the motion. Thank you. I now call Mr Paul Given. Well, uh, Deputy Speaker, um, I rise to support the motion and want to uh, commend my colleagues, uh, Mr Easton and Ms Cameron, on bringing forward the uh, motion. It is right that this House recognises uh, the work that is carried out uh, by uh, uh, animals that are in the service of the prison service, the police service, the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service. Uh, I know within the police service there are some 64 dogs that are currently uh, one could say within the employment of the prison service. I'm not sure that they get paid the same as a police officer, uh, but nevertheless, uh, they are there and they provide a vital uh, part of the service. Um, whenever you see them in operation at uh, public uh, order events, uh, it certainly adds a deterrent value, I'm sure, uh, to those who are staring down uh, the barrel at a particular uh, vicious alsatian. Uh, that's one thing to make sure that you keep your behaviour in check. Uh, but it's only but right that those dogs are then given the adequate protection that they need uh, in order to deter those individuals who do seek to uh, inflict harm on those service animals. Uh, I know within the prison service, uh, the, the dogs carry out a vitally important role, particularly in the detection of drugs. The little waggy tail that's going profusely whenever the visitations are taking place identifies the attempts that are made to smuggle drugs into the prison, and that happens very frequently. How those dogs are de detested by prisoners and by those who are on visitation, utterly detested because of the effectiveness of their job. To the dog, it's just a game, it's a bit of sport, they get well rewarded for it, but they carry out a valuable job. Within the last five years, two of those dogs have been injured in the prison. One was injured by a snooker ball being thrown at it during a public disorder occasion within the prison. It is only but right that that dog then should be given additional protection within the law and a prosecution brought against the perpetrator of those individuals that attack uh, these animals. We think about how these uh, dogs in particular, whenever you go through uh, even airports and you see the dog just going up and down uh, the luggage, the vitally important role that they do in trying to detect not just drugs but also explosives. Those animals need to be given proper protection. And then I see how these dogs used very successfully in operations, uh, not just in this jurisdiction, but I note uh, President Trump, who awarded a medal of honour to Conan the dog, who was the only part of the Special Forces Delta team that was injured in the, uh, in the operation against the Islamic terrorist al-Baghdadi. The dog chased him down the tunnel, who then subsequently detonated the suicide vest on him. It was only Conan that was injured in that operation. No other service pe personnel was injured. And so, uh, rightly, that dog was given special recognition by President Trump. And so we think about the heroism that takes place with these dogs. And some people, uh, we are a, a dog-loving nation. We love our pets. I have a lovely golden retriever, not one that I would put on the front line, uh, afraid of its own shadow. Uh, but w we love our animals, and it's only but right that we give them the protection that they need. So I would implore the uh, DERA minister, who is ultimately responsible for this. It's not the Minister for Justice. I, I trust that the Minister for Justice will give her full support uh, to the DERA minister, as he would want to, I hope, confirm uh, the desire to bring forward this legislation to this Assembly, because there isn't sufficient protection in our law here in Northern Ireland. There is greater protection in England and Wales. There is a Scottish bill that is currently before uh, the Scottish Parliament, but there is no specific offence currently in Northern Ireland's legislation. And so uh, I would say to the Minister, bring it forward uh, to this House. Uh, I would ask that uh, the Minister would also look at a, 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 an issue that I see with Finn's law in that those animals are only given protection when they are under the control of police and prison officers. Outside of that, uh, there isn't protection for other dogs that are engaged uh, where the voluntary sector uh, do use them because the fire service uh, use dogs from the voluntary sector. They are not directly uh, within the Northern Ireland Fire and Rescue Service. And so there is, I think, a loophole that we need to ensure that our legislation uh, is effective 
It is robust and it comprehensively provides the kind of protection that is needed for these vitally important animals that are carrying out a service for all of us here in Northern Ireland. And I would commend the motion, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much. The last speaker uh, before I call the Minister is Mr. John Dallet. Well, speaker, I uh, support the, the, the previous uh, contributors to this, this debate uh, in their entirety. And I simply would take the opportunity to add that the welfare of service dogs is not simply when they are in patrol, but indeed uh, when they are off duty and indeed when they retire. Uh, I remember in particular and with great fondness uh, two dogs that served with the fire service. One was called Storm and the other was called Ben, uh, a Springer and a Labrador. And as a member of the Public Accounts Committee at the time, there was a whistleblower did express concern that the welfare of the animals was in, in question. Now, I am happy to accept that today there will be no issues about the welfare of the animals while off duty, but I would take the opportunity uh, to ask the Minister to ensure that at all times service dogs, whether they are with the PSNI, uh, the, the fire service uh, customs or, or whatever, uh, have the highest standard of accommodation, let's say, and uh, welfare because we are now the custodians of animal welfare in all its forms, and I certainly would not want ever to be told in the future that perhaps animals serving in our government departments uh, had standards of care and welfare that fell below uh, what we would accept. I have nothing else to say, uh, and what I have said is not to imply that there are issues currently, but there were issues, I believe, in the past uh, that were not addressed. And I remember to this day Storm and Ben and hope that their life ended uh, much better than perhaps I was told. I thank the member. Uh, before I call the minister, I remind him that he will have 15 minutes to respond. And then I'll call Mrs. Pam Cameron to wind. Thank you, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And it's good to see uh, so much unanimity around the chamber on this particular issue today. I think it's a very important issue, and I welcome the fact that it's been brought forward uh, by uh, Mr. Easton and Ms. Cameron. And uh, I trust that it will be something which we can develop uh, very quickly in the lifetime of this Assembly. We only have two years in this assembly to get things done in reality, and members will find that that's a very short space of time. And certainly, on this particular uh, issue, I would hope that this assembly can make a mark uh, for the betterment of animal welfare. Animal welfare does fall under my department, and uh, the Department of Agriculture, Environment, and Rural Affairs, and it is an issue which we take very seriously. And the motion calls on me to introduce legislation into Northern Ireland which would offer extra protection to service animals, similar to that which has been afforded to these animals in England and Wales under the Animal Welfare Services Act 2019, commonly known as Finn's Law. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak to this matter before the Chamber. Some members may not be aware of this law, but those that are not, uh, it may assist if I set out what Finn's Law does. Finn's law came into effect in June 2019 when the UK Government amended the Animal Welfare Act 2006 in England and Wales to provide specific protections for service animals which have been attacked when on duty. Under the 2006 Act, it is an offence to inflict unnecessary suffering on an animal. In determining whether suffering is unnecessary, a number of considerations are taken into account, including whether the conduct which caused the suffering was for a legitimate purpose. <coughs> Excuse me, such as the protection of a person, property or another individual. Prior to the introduction of Finn's Law, under the 2000 Act, an individual could claim that they were justified in using physical force against a service animal by arguing that they were acting in self-defence. 
But let's just talk for a moment <clears throat> about the role of the service animal and where it might be. Very often, and Mr Given outlined some of the circumstances, very often it will go into a prison situation where it could be searching for drugs. That's something which humans cannot actually deliver on, where a dog can. And therefore, the effectiveness of the dog is without question. But the violence of the prisoners can also be without question. And on occasions, whenever the prisoners are involved in riotous situations, again, the dog is put into the front line. So we need to ensure that prisoners know that that animal has additional protections, and unless they want a considerable period added on to their sentence, they don't touch that animal. It's a very powerful message that we put out in that situation. On the streets, the dog will be out there confronting violent criminals again. And once again, violent criminals need to recognise that that dog has protection under the law. When it comes to identifying drugs in the streets, again, that's a key role in the airports. So these service animals have key roles in terms of delivering where human beings can't. And I think that that's absolutely critically important in this debate. Thank you, Minister. And again, I would like to uh, put on record my thanks and for the member for bringing forward this motion and the widespread support for uh, better protections for our service animals. Uh, but the member knows, as an animal enthusiast myself, uh, would he share with me uh, our thanks and appreciation to the wide variety of service animals that have played a role uh, in history uh, in relation to, I'm thinking specifically of the Dickens Medal, which is the Victoria Cross equivalent for service animals, awarded 71 times, with many here from Northern Ireland receiving that award. Yes, uh, and I know that the member has a passion for pigeons, and I congratulate him on his ingenuity <laughs> in getting uh, in that those service animals uh, were awarded uh, that medal during the, uh, uh, the Second World War. And that was, of course, going to the pigeon, uh, pigeons who actually carried all of those messages. And they'd done a fantastic job in terms of um, getting those messages uh, back home. And uh, congratulations uh, to um, all of those that were involved. I understand that Finn's Law was introduced following three high-profile cases in England where a decision was taken not to prosecute alleged perpetrators under the 2000 Act. Um, for the reason as stated above. And Finn's law provides that anyone who causes unnecessary suffering to a serviced animal whilst in commission of its duties cannot use self-defence as a mitigation. It applies to animals under the control of a police officer or a prison officer, but not search and rescue dogs and other working animals. Mr Given has raised that issue, and that is something that I will take on board in terms of animals who are do not belong to the police or prison service, but are provided um, to um, key services such as search and rescue, and they, they provide an invaluable service uh, in, the, in that front line. I am also informed that a bill is also before the Scottish Parliament, which purpose, proposes to provide extra protection for service animals in that jurisdiction. So in Northern Ireland, the welfare of all animals is protected under the Welfare of Animals Act, Northern Ireland 2011. And under the 2011 Act, it is an offence uh, of causing unnecess unnecessary suffering to an animal. There are no specific provisions for service dogs. This means that an individual charged with this offence can argue that they were acting in self-defence and therefore justified in using physical force against a service animal. My department has been keeping the matter of sins law and the position in Scotland under careful review, and some initial steps have been taken to identify. Uh, the evidence base uh, to take this matter forward. I recognise the invaluable work taken forward by service animals in Northern Ireland, and I can assure you that I take the welfare of animals very seriously. And I am very sympathetic to the introduction of extra, extra protection for service animals here in Northern Ireland. I can see how being the only jurisdiction of the United Kingdom not to afford that extra protection has the potential to reflect adversely on our reputation as a custodian of animal welfare. Therefore, I will be um, consulting 
with the Department of Justice and my uh, ministerial colleague Naomi Long uh, on this particular issue. Um, thereafter, I would hope to bring forward a public consultation process on this issue and thereafter uh, bring legislation forward to this House on the back of a public consultation process, uh, depending on the outcome of that. But I have little doubt that the outcome would be very positive, um, <coughs> given uh, the feedback from this House today uh, and given the natural instinct that we have uh, to afford good care and welfare to animals. That's not something uh, which goes across one party in this chamber. I believe it's something uh, which, will go, which does go across um, all parties in this chamber. It's not a political issue. It's an issue of what is good and what is right and what is the right thing to do. And therefore, I would wish to pursue that particular line and start the process of legislation which involves all of the relevant consultations in advance of that. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Thank you. I now call Mrs. Pam Cameron to wind the debate. The speaker will have 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And, uh, I just want to, first of all, uh, say it's a great pleasure to wind on this debate today, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, and I want to thank all of those who have taken part in today's debate and for the level of consensus that we have across this House uh, in supporting the introduction of Finn's Law to Northern Ireland. Anyone who knows me knows that I love animals and especially my dogs. And to those of you out there who follow me either on Twitter or Facebook, I apologise for all the countless photographs you're subjected to of my lovely pups. Um, the thoughts of anyone being cruel to animals, and any animal, really does pain me. And it's beyond comprehension how anyone can act in such a fashion. And as a legislator, I want to make sure that Northern Ireland leads the way in the protection of animals. This is all the more deserving, obviously, of our service animals. It is a remarkable and sad statistic that more than 100 other service animals have been injured since 2012. Whether it be dogs or horses, these animals play a brave and vital role in keeping our society safe, and their lives are often at risk of loss or injury in the line of duty. A public service, and as such, they ought to receive the protection that we, the public, can grant to them. So, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, just in turning to some of the comments made by the members in the chamber uh, this morning, um, Alex Eason, the proposer of the motion, um, talked about how Finn was repeatedly stabbed, um, that attacks are very much on a daily basis in some parts, and that um, few of these um, are pursued in court that the fact that it's not included in current Animal Welfare Act, and that is immoral. He also spoke about how, um, talked about how laws elsewhere in the rest of the world affected service dogs. He also referred to the change in law at Westminster, Finn's Law, and talked about how uh, there was up to five years imprisonment related to those charges. He also mentioned the petition in Northern Ireland, which has been supported by many charities and 44,000 um, signatures, which is fantastic. And he um, talked about how, obviously, this subject is currently excluded from, the, from protection under the Animal Welfare Act. So that the Northern Ireland Service Animals must have protection. And um, we moved on then to Linda Dillon, who was very clear in uh, speaking about protection of service animals as well and said that the loophole in legislation must be addressed. Patsy McGlone was up next and um, he said that there was an immense contribution made by service animals and that um, criminal damage um, and the, the relation of all that uh, charge, how that demeans the animals who, um, who are involved. Though he was also supporting the motion today and also mentioned the, his party's proposals for an all-island animal cruelty register. And we moved on to Rosemary Barton, then she was supportive of the motion also and talked about uh, legislation uh, being introduced in the Assembly and about the different organisations that this affects and she mentioned uh, in particular 
fire and rescue and customs controls, maybe uh, some areas that we might not naturally think of when we think of service animals, so thank you for that. Um, <coughs> she also um, talked about the type of abuse that dogs often suffer, uh, kicking and being stabbed. The next uh, contributor was John Blair and he commended the bringers of the motion and said that he hoped that the support for animal cruelty was needed in other areas such as sport and uh, that public service animals should never be taken for granted. Harry Harvey made his maiden speech here today and he paid tribute to Simon Hamilton and wished him well in his new role at Belfast Chamber of Commerce. He paid tribute to his late father who served in this house and uh, spoke of the, the lack of legislation currently being in place in Northern Ireland to deal with this subject as well. So Philip McGuigan was up next and he said that uh, animal cruelty should not be tolerated and I think we can all concur with that. Paul Given was next and he talked in particular about police service dogs, 64 in total, um, and uh, questioned how much they were paid, which is interesting. Um, he said it was only right that these dogs were given protection and that um, in prisons in particular, that the, he talked about the waggy tails that detect drugs in prison and that very valuable role that is carried out. He also mentioned um, how one dog in particular had been badly injured by a snooker ball. And he also um, raised the subject of dogs at airports who do an incredible job of detecting not just drugs but explosives. He spoke of his own golden retriever who said he wouldn't put in the front line as he was afraid of his own shadow. So I don't think we'll be submitting his CV anytime soon. Um, and he also spoke on a very serious note about that there wasn't enough uh, protection here in Northern Ireland, no specific offence in Northern Ireland. Uh, and again, about the loophole that dogs are used in, um, dogs that are used in a, a voluntary environment as well, that could be another loophole. John Dallet also supported uh, the motion and um, referred to Storm and Ben Fire Service, um, I think he mentioned animals, who um, were brought to his attention and in his time on the um, Public Accounts Committee um, and the concern for the welfare of those animals. Um, so we moved on to uh, Minister Putz and it was good to see the um, very positive contribution he made to this topic and his uh, commitment to, to look at taking this matter forward in conjunction um, with the Justice Minister, Minister Long, to ensure that, um, that we have appropriate laws in Northern Ireland for the welfare of our service animals. He spoke uh, about the fact that animal welfare falls under his department um, and he also talked about the Westminster legislation which was brought in in June 2019 and the specific protections that um, were given then to animals who were injured on duty. Uh, so, he also mentioned, Mr President, Deputy Speaker, the the bill before the Scottish Parliament and this should be kept under review. Um, I think we always have uh, plenty to learn from other jurisdictions uh, and, and uh, it's good to look at how these things are managed throughout the rest of the world to get the best practice, so that's very welcome. Um, he was very sympathetic to the introduction of extra protection for our service animals and he um, alluded to a public consultation that he'd be undertaking um, and that he would be working with the, the Minister of Justice on this. So, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, it's very nice to have um, a agreement again around the House. And um, just wanted to say that, uh, in conclusion, that you know, these sentences must be reflective of the high regard that we hold for these animals. A slap on the wrist is not enough. And I would encourage the Minister to, to do as he has alluded he will do and take forward legislation that reflects this and move to bring Finn's Law into Northern Ireland. Thank you. Order. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. As many are, as are of that opinion say aye. Aye. Contrary, if any. I think the ayes have it. 
the eyes have it. <clears throat> the next item on the order paper is a motion on nice guidance on fertility. I'll ask the